Yeah, we. Uh, I got a, a friend down in LA who uh, he uh, he acts as a kind of a manager, consultant for actors and people like that. And he had this idea one time. Uh, oh, nobody's offended if I smoke a cigarette. He had this idea one time um, that he would. Uh, the guy's very creative, and he's a good writer. And he tells a good story. He can make things up, you know. And what he does is he'll sit and he'll talk with you. Let's say you're the actor, right? And he'll sit and he'll talk with you, put you on, sit down on the couch and do it. Talk for a while, kind of get a feel for uh, uh, what kind of role would, would, would fit you perfectly, you know. Like maybe you're a spy, or maybe you're a folk singer, or maybe you're a housewife, or maybe you're something else. But what he does is, uh, then what he does is he'll, he'll make up kind of a, like a story behind the character, and he won't tell you the story, see? He'll take you into a studio, a video studio, and he'll get two or three cameras looking at you real close, and then he starts asking you questions about this book you just wrote. <laughs> and you're completely unprepared. He never did this with me, but I saw him do it. I, I went with him a few times. And, and you get this close-up of this person, uh, you get really real, real responses, live responses to questions like they have no idea what he's going to ask. And he makes up situations, makes up things that he did, you know, that he had no, no forewarning. And then you have to answer these questions as if they were real. Well, the story, he'll do a half-hour thing like this, and it's so intriguing that every time it airs on, on cable TV down there, his phone starts to ring about someone interested in the actor, someone interested in the story or the idea. Last I heard, he was syndicating a series, which is like amazing because these things cost him like 50 bucks a pop to produce. That's it, it's incredible. So anyway, I had this idea when I came back to Canada. I produced this half hour TV video and put it on cable TV, but what do I find out? You can't do that in Canada. I love this country, bro. You can't do that up here. Why? Well, at least in Vancouver I couldn't, because it had nothing to do with the community. Because I was trying to make something of myself out of this. You see, I was trying to be, trying to get something going. You know, like they do down south. Like they're kind of free down there in a way, you know? So, sitting around up here for a couple of years, I don't know, I'm getting too serious with pumping sacks of potatoes for two years, you know, and, and uh, I always believed in my songs. I always thought they were good. Finally, I got the idea, well, why don't, why don't I do this big promo campaign, make it funny, attract a lot of interest, and kind of get the newspapers behind me, maybe a radio station, you see, maybe even get cable TV down here to film the thing, because now suddenly they're interested, because now suddenly it has something to do with the community. Right? I don't know, cable maybe. Uh, it slipped my mind to ask, to ask the cable station to come down here. Until yesterday, so we were having a meeting and someone, someone mentioned, uh, Nick Green, I think, or somebody mentioned, uh, why don't you call up the cable station? So Nick called them up short and was, I guess, I don't, I don't think they're here tonight. They don't have the equipment. Hey? They don't have the equipment. They don't have the equipment. Well, they can use Keith's uh, radio. Where's Keith? <laughs> it's gone. He's up to the rock. <laughs> Normally, I see that little red light. There it is. If I want to, you know, I want to grin into the camera, I just look at that little red light. So anyway, that's kind of, uh, that's a little bit of what I'm up to here. Just, uh, you know, if anybody was curious about all those ads and everything, uh, none of that really happened. Oh, I'm sorry to lay it on you like that. <laughs> the only thing real about it was that, uh, that uh, chase through town last week. Uh, the sheriff of London was, was truly after me, only not for anything that I did, uh, just because just of that damn public system line. Sheriff of London wanted an apology for the queen. <laughs> Apparently I embarrassed her with all that press, associating her with someone like me.
you're, you're all still here? That's good. That's good. <laughs> good story. I got a girlfriend a thousand miles away. I wrote the letters in 36 days. I tried to call, call the Mr. Red. I called again, phoned in this tent, and I said, Oh, go my baby, pay your bills. I said, Oh, she's been crazy. 